I'm John Collins. I'm a freelance filmmaker and cameraman working across branded content, corporate and broadcast. I've teamed up with Wex to discuss tripods. A tripod is one of the best investments you can make in kit. A decent one with correct handling and maintenance will most likely last you your entire career, unlike most of the kit you probably own. In this film, I'm gonna use this Miller CX2 to demonstrate how to set up a tripod, but the theory will apply to most other fluid head tripods. To start, you wanna work out what the composition of your image should be. I often do this handheld to start with. I find the correct angle and height. Next, you wanna get your tripod in place. Set the height of the legs. I like to work from the bottom stage up on a multi-stage tripod like this. This means that you won't have to awkwardly tilt the tripod on one leg at a time if you need to get up any further. Next up, you want to bubble your tripod head bowl to ensure that it's horizontal. You now want to attach the camera to the tripod and ensure that it's balanced with the center of gravity center to the tripod head. So a line down here. To do this, you dangle the camera from the handle on one finger to find out where the center is. It's around about there. So you want to get that line there lined up with that point there. You then want to ensure that this is the point that is centered to the tripod head. To test, you can set the drag and the counterbalance down to zero and it should stay fairly level. You're now ready to set the counterbalance. The point of the counterbalance, contrary to popular belief, is not to spring the camera back to center position like so, but it's to take the weight of the camera. The counterbalance in the head is made up of a series of springs which work with the head to take the weight of the camera. Different tripods have different levels of counterbalance. This Miller CX2 has 16 separate levels. Other tripods may only have two or may be completely variable. But what you're looking to do is to have enough counterbalance to hold the camera in position, but not enough to physically tilt the camera when you let go of it. So with this one, I kind of start with, start with it around there and you can see the camera is still moving. So if I push, push this back up to to 12, engage it like so, that's too much because it's bouncing around, knock it back down to 9. With a properly set counterbalance, you should, although I'm not advising it, be able to walk away from your tripod and not turn around 30 seconds later to see your whole camera tilting backwards and falling to the floor. The next phase is setting the drag. This is very much down to personal taste really, but you want it to keep the camera steady whilst tilting or panning. A true fluid head gets its name from using fluid filled chambers which offer the resistance. Cheaper tripod heads often don't do this, they'll use a friction pad to offer the resistance, which as it wears can become juddery and not very accurate. In practical terms, a true fluid head will give you faith that you'll get smooth and consistent shots every time when panning or tilting. Basic, cheaper models may be great for locked off shots, but as soon as you start adding moves into that, you may well find they let your camera work down. You never want to miss a moment on sets or have to repeat something because your kit isn't up to scratch. Premium fluid heads from the likes of Miller or Satchela will last indefinitely and will be a much wiser investment. Cheaper fluid effect heads don't have these chambers. They use a friction pad and they're likely to wear out and they won't be good with heavier loads. In terms of the amount of drag to use, if I'm doing a very long and slow move, I may use a fair bit of resistance. If I'm filming something like a sports event, I'll use very little to ensure that I have the fastest possible response time to the action. Finally, just a note about packing it all away. To maximize the longevity of your tripod, release all the locks and set the drag and counterbalance down to zero. This then means if you were to drop your tripod, which regularly happens on my shoots, you're less likely to damage the internal components. It's good to occasionally brush or air blow your tripods, wipe away any moisture before packing it away. If you follow that, your tripod is more likely to survive a long and prosperous career. So I hope you found this film helpful. If you're interested in purchasing one of these Miller CX tripods, they're available now from the Wex store. If you've got any additional hints or tips, feel free to leave a comment on Wex's social feeds. 